Sam, can you come and help me? These lab manuals are stuck together and I need to form, film the static friction video. It's him. Oh, pull harder! Oh. Pull harder! Oh. No, no, this is no. impossible. It's not going to happen, no. is it? No, that does not work. Mm. Hmm. What should we do? Yeah, wonder why. What you just saw was an example of static friction. Seb and I couldn't get the lab manual separated because of the static friction force holding them together. In this laboratory exercise, you're going to be investigating the factors that affect static friction. So what you're going to be doing is placing boxes on a ramp and then changing the angle of the ramp to find out when that box just starts to slide down the ramp. And you're going to be using that angle to calculate the coefficient of static friction, which is given the symbol mu s. So in the very first part of this experiment, you're going to need to come up with a relationship between mu s and that maximum angle, theta max. So in order to do that, you're going to need to understand how to break forces into components parallel to and perpendicular to an inclined plane. So let's say that we had an inclined plane here, inclined at some angle theta, and we place our box with mass m on that plane. We know that we can show the weight force acting on this box as acting on its centre of mass, and so that's going to act directly downwards, and it's going to have some magnitude, mg. Another way to do, draw this mg is to break it into its two components, parallel to and perpendicular to this slope. So to do this, we can draw one component here, parallel to the slope, and one component perpendicular to the slope there. So these two components are at right angles to each other. Now in the lab, you're going to be showing that this angle theta is the same as this angle theta here. You may want to have a bit of a think about how to show this and derive this relationship before coming to the lab. What we can then do is use trigonometry for right angle triangles to work out what these two angles are. So I remember the trigonometry with Sokotoa. You probably have your own method, but sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, cos theta adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan theta opposite over adjacent. So here we have the hypotenuse, we know it's mg. And so we can see that this component here, parallel to the slope that's opposite, is given by mg sine theta. And this component here, perpendicular to the slope, is given by mg cos theta. Now, in order to derive this relationship for mu s, you're also going to need to make use of a couple of extra points. We know that when this box is stationary, all the forces acting on it must be balanced. That's what Newton's first law tells us. If there's no movement, then there's no net force acting on the body. So the forces must be balanced. And this holds when we break it into components as well. So the forces perpendicular to the slope must be balanced, or it would be accelerating into or out of that slope, which it's not. It wasn't flying up off the slope. And we know that the forces parallel to the slope need to be balanced because we are measuring this maximum angle for which it's not moving. So the parallel components need to be balanced as well. So we can use that fact to work out the other forces acting on this box. We know that there's a normal reaction force from the slope pushing upwards on it and so that's up here and that is perpendicular to the slope. 
So because these perpendicular components have to be opposite and equal to balance each other out, we know that our normal reaction force, Fn, is given by mg cos theta, and that's upwards perpendicular to that slope. Now the other thing we know is that the frictional force is going to be pushing this up the slope to balance the weight force going down the slope. So we'll have our frictional force going up here, so we can give that the symbol Fs. Now the maximum value this frictional force can have is when this angle's the maximum, and Fs max is given by mu s fn, where this fn is the normal force, and this is our coefficient of static friction. This is how the definition for that coefficient comes about. So what you're going to need to think about to work out what this mu s is, is, well, what's this fs max equal to? And you're going to need to substitute in for this normal force here. So I'd recommend have a quick go at that before coming to the lab. You will have some time in the lab to work on it as well, and you can talk to your demonstrators about it if you get a bit stuck. So the equipment used for this experiment is quite simple. You have an inclined track supported by this retort stand, a protractor, a meter ruler, a couple of masses, a cork board and four boxes that you'll be placing on the track. Two of these have a plastic bottom, one has a felt bottom and one has a cork bottom. So the method you'll be using is placing the box on the track. You'll then be very gently increasing the angle of the track until that box just starts to slide down. Once you've found that angle, lock the track in place, and now what we need to do is measure the angle. The protractor will give you a rough estimate of the angle, but to get a more accurate measurement, you should use your meter ruler and the ruler on the track to measure the length of the track and the height of the track. If you're using the cork board, remember to subtract off the height of the cork board. You can then calculate the angle here, theta, by using the formula sine theta, is equal to height over length. You're going to want to calculate uncertainties in mu s. So in order to do that, you're going to place the box at three different places on the track. So at the top, in the middle, and down the bottom. You're then going to repeat that measurement, having the track lowered, and then slowly raising it to find that maximum angle. So you should end up with different mu s's for the different locations on the track. And you can then use the formula range divided by 2 to get the uncertainty in your, for, in your value for mu s. Once you've got it for the plastic box, you'll be repeating this method to work out what factors affect mu s. So you'll be doubling the surface area by using two boxes. You'll try different materials, and you'll try different weight forces acting on that box. Okay. Good luck with this experiment. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope that after trying the experiment, you can explain why at the beginning, Seb and I had so much difficulty getting those lab manuals separated.